What is going on everyone? Welcome to another very exciting episode right here on the MI Gardener channel. I am so excited about today's episode because we're gonna be talking all about how to properly prune perennials. How to properly prune perennials. Wow, that was an interesting tongue twister that I did not expect to uh, happen, but <laughs> it did. So we're gonna be talking about how to properly prune perennials and they're not going to be fruit trees like our orchard, like we normally talk about. We're gonna be talking about how to prune uh, different perennials raspberries, artichokes, um, some of your perennial herbs, things like that. Because we talk a lot about how to properly prune your fruit trees, but so many people don't really understand that there are some common techniques to pruning your other perennials that are a little bit different. And where I'm getting at is that when you prune a fruit tree, you know, you don't really want to prune the whole thing back. You want to kind of be selective of what you prune so that, uh, so that next year's fruit production is not inhibited. And we've talked about how uh, plants like these raspberries, when you prune them back, all of that new growth next year is what fruits. So how do we prune those? And how do we prune things like artichokes, which tend to die back to the down to the base? How do we prune things like asparagus, which tend to die back down to the base? So our raspberries have already fruited. They've uh, actually, unfortunately, they had a lot of fruit that came out in the fall, but did not have enough time to ripen because we were struck with that really super cold, cold front that moved through and brought 13 inches of snow. But uh, it really kind of came out of nowhere and allowed um, all this fruit to uh, pretty much die on the plant, which was really unfortunate. I was really hoping we'd get a lot more, but that's okay. So what are we gonna do? Well, the foliage is still green, but for, for the most part, most of the energy is down in the root system of the raspberries. Um, just because foliage is green does not mean that it is creating energy. A lot of people, they always say, well, you know, if it's green foliage, don't cut it. I always say that after you get your first freeze, there is no more energy production uh, that is happening in the plant. The energy is down in the root system. It's being stored for winter. So even though the leaves are green, does not mean anything. Um, you can go ahead and prune these, it's totally fine. Just wait until you, after you get your first frost or freeze before you do prune. So what are we gonna do? Well, we're gonna pull out our pruners, our pruners are in our front pocket this time, normally they're in my back pocket. We're gonna pull out our pruners and we're gonna prune these way back. We're gonna prune them down to about a foot off the ground. All right, so I'm just gonna come in here and you got all this beautiful growth and it hurts to do, but it's actually gonna be far better off in the spring. So what we're gonna do is come back in here and clip all of these back. It's something that you really should be doing, especially if they've already fruited, because once they fruit, they will not fruit again on that growth. So you can see here, all of these berries, all these berries here, they were formed on, these, on this cane right here. This cane will not produce fruit again. It will branch off and it'll bush out, but here's the problem. A lot of people, they grow these and they become so unmanageable because they get so big. And so once they, once they fruit, uh, they will form secondary new growth off of these that then can produce fruit. But that's the problem is that then they also form canes. And I would much rather just form a new cane that forms fruit and kind of keep them all condensed rather than forming this giant uh, bush and have all these thorns everywhere. So um, I prefer just to go pruning these through and pruning them out. And also what you're gonna see in here as you prune these out, you're going to see the old growth from, from years past, which is brown and, and woody. This brown and woody growth here are these old canes that they will die back. After a cane produces enough times, it'll produce this center, it'll produce this center growth. That growth, as you prune it back, will produce side growth. And that side growth will typically only produce another third time before it actually dies back completely. Now this did not die because of a disease. This died just because it has a life expectancy. So what you wanna do is just continually, uh, kind of continually promote that new growth by coming in here and pruning all that stuff back. All right, so I just wrapped up this plant right here and I'm gonna get the other plants taken care of later today, but I wanna move on to artichoke because I do get a lot of questions about how to overwinter artichokes. So this one here is done, we're gonna move on. And uh, if you have any questions about pruning raspberries, let me know in the comments box below, but pretty self-explanatory. You just wanna cut them to about a foot because uh, that's gonna allow more energy to sprout up in the spring in the form of new growth and more fruiting growth for you. So, all right, on to artichokes. All right, so now we're gonna talk about how to properly prune artichokes. So as you can see, the artichoke here has a lot of dead growth up at the top and a lot of green growth down at the bottom. That's actually a natural defense mechanism that the artichoke has put into place to protect itself from cold weather. What it will do is it will go dormant from about a foot up and it will essentially kill it off. 
That way it can conserve energy. It's almost like you, if you jump into really cold water, you'll notice that your extremities go tingly and numb and cold before your core does because you're, you're essentially cutting off blood flow to the tips where it's harder to get blood to those outer reaches of your body and it keeps it in your, uh, near your, your vital organs. And it's very much the same. The vital organs of the artichoke is the root system. And so what it does is essentially keeps all this growth alive, cutting off that top part, which we can prune away. And then what we don't wanna do is prune any of this stuff here that's then going to wilt down and act as an insulated barrier. It actually wilt down and protect and essentially create a canopy where snow and other, you know, um, and other cold weather can't get in and actually uh, and actually really penetrate the soil because it acts as a nice little insulative barrier around the root system. So all we're gonna do is just come in here and prune that off. It's pretty thick, <laughs> but wow, should have grabbed it saw for this there there we go okay so there we go <laughs> that is all the dead anything brown can go and then what we want to do is anything green we just want to leave so that's like i said about soil level up to about a foot it's all going to be all this green growth and that's what's going to wilt down and protect the roots. So that's all you have to do to really protect your artichokes and get them to overwinter. Um, you can actually take some leaves and straw and pack it around the, the uh, pack it around the underside of the plant for extra protection. That's totally fine. That's very optional. Um, in in uh, zones like five, uh, five and four, you might want to do that because. Um, these artichokes are really only cold hardy to zone five uh, and in a very good year. So even in maybe zone six would be a smart idea, but generally just this natural protection is enough to keep the plant alive and uh, able to overwinter. All right, so now we're here with our herbs. Now these are our perennial herbs. This will apply to any perennial herb. It doesn't matter if it's parsley, sage, oregano, thyme, which I'm already starting to kind of prune up here, uh, but any of your perennial herbs, this will apply to. Um, and we got some sage right here that we're gonna do this to as well. And what you wanna do is you want to come in and you wanna prune about 50% of the foliage. Now, the reason why we're a little more aggressive with these, uh, with herbs, is because they produce a lot of foliage. The thing is that these plants, they'll pretty much remain evergreen all through winter. The problem is that that foliage then turns woody in the spring and woody growth does not promote new growth. Woody growth actually reduces uh, the, the amount of growth it will then flower as well. Woody growth flowers rather than produces new growth. And also woody growth is not fragrant. Um, one of the things about the, uh, the potency of herbs is that new growth has far more essential oil content than woody growth. So you're, you're actually helping the overall quality of your herbs by pruning them, but also you're, you're helping the overall health of them. So what I'm doing is I'm just coming in here, I'm clipping back, like I said, about 50% of the growth, um, really not, not measuring, I'm just kind of loosely eyeballing. And all the energy is down in the root system. Herbs are some of your most cold hardy plants in the garden. And well, and it does vary on the herb as well. I mean, rosemary is not nearly as cold hardy as say thyme is, but for the most part, your herbs, your perennial herbs are going to be very cold tolerant. And so a lot of that energy is already deep down in the root system and it's gonna bounce back extremely well in the spring. So what you don't wanna do is you don't wanna have a whole lot of that growth there because they fork and they spread and they create all this really um, clustered up growth that does not allow for good airflow. And when you don't have good airflow, one thing will plague you more than, uh, more than anything else and that's rot and mildew. So molds are something that really takes hold uh, in the spring and fall months when the weather is cold and damp. And we always talk about this because it's one of the biggest issues that gardeners face. We want to make sure that we're taking away all this foliage because every time we prune, it creates a new set of, uh, a new set of branches. And that new set of branches creates a new set of branches. And you'll notice whether it's, you know, it doesn't matter if it's thyme or if it's uh, sage, the same thing happens here where, um, I'll get a good example for both. You'll see what I'm talking about. Um, both of these, both of these have been pruned and what happens is that creates new growth and more new growth 
and more new growth. And you can see here how there's not a lot of airflow coming in the center here. There's also not a lot of airflow coming in the center here. When all these are growing up, these are very prone to molds and mildews like powdery mildew because there's not a lot of airflow that can penetrate through here. And when you get a damp, cold rain, it just sets in here, sets in all the foliage, and it really can end up rotting out the plant and causing mildews to take hold, which then affect your growth and uh, the overall plant health. Not to mention, all of this is amazing to use in the kitchen. So what we're gonna do is we're just going to bundle all this up and we're gonna take it in the kitchen to dry. So uh, you get a bonus. You know, when you prune your herbs, not only do you get healthier and better quality herbs, but you also get herbs to take inside. And so we're actually gonna use these and uh, and our time as well in some Thanksgiving cooking. So I'm really excited to uh, to utilize these in our cooking because fresh herbs from the garden just cannot, they just can't be beat. So really loving this. This is just a, such a treat. All right, so now we're with one of the last plants and these are plants that are perennial, but they die back completely. These are plants like asparagus, this here bee balm, these are in the same category of plants that die back completely as soon as, weather as soon as winter weather comes. So what do we do with these? So unlike the raspberries that do still have some green growth, these die back completely, meaning that there's really no sense in, uh, in leaving anything but the root system intact. So all we're going to do is we're simply going to come in, and these are the easiest ones, we're simply going to come in here and prune them back right at the base of the soil. This is just to clean things up, and there's no point in there's no point in leaving anything left of the plant because, well, the plant is completely dead. So these are really easy to prune back. You just gotta clean them up and it makes the garden look a whole lot nicer too, might I add. But these are plants that, like I said, are perennial, but they just regrow from the, uh, from the base in the springtime. And pruning them back right to the soil level has no ill effects whatsoever. Um, so all we're gonna do is just prune all this out. Ugh. Man, and not to mention, when it dies back, it makes a complete mess of your garden, and it's really difficult to prune out, too. So, ugh, wow, all right. Um, <laughs> we're gonna get this stuff pruned out here, and then uh, we can get inside and, and warm up. All right, it is dropping. The, the sun has gone down, and it's getting darker by the, uh, by the minute, and with the sun going down, it means it's getting cold. So, all right, okie dokie. Let's get this stuff all pruned out. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something new. If you did, make sure to leave a like. It helps spread this video around to more people that could use this video. And also, let me know what you learned in the comments box below. Or if you have any questions, let me know as well. And as always, I'll catch you all on tomorrow's episode. Grow big or go home.